What have we become as a nation? Why are we just forgetting these lessons of history and our values? And many people are saying to me, we're leadership, we're leaderless, we're, we're heartless, the country's almost hopeless. And while many might say that the world is now much more complex than earlier times, I think it's a poor excuse which actually covers up this ignorance that's been engineered into our education system over the last 25 years or more. It seems to neglect examples of past atrocities against our freedom to younger generations so, so that they could at least understand or it, perhaps better understand what's actually happening to us as a nation right now. Adolf Hitler, that dreadful person, he, he used this term to keep you safe, to excuse and uh, justify the restrictions to freedom that he imposed. None of that's taught. The atrocities of the left by Mao Zedong, by Joseph Stalin, by Pol Pot, none of those things are taught to our kids. But our kids are indoctrinated on the big lies like climate change and cancel culture, making us feel bad about ourselves. Our children, I think, are vulnerable to manipulation and all of us are as a result. Our kids have been institutionalised to ignore history. And, of course, that condemns them and, I guess, us to repeatedly making the same mistakes. Our core values, our structures are still there, but they're coded in a camouflage of confusing claims and counterclaims, which causes so many people to just tune out. Fewer people are consuming news media, participating in important debates. Most seem to yield, yield to the, the views of the loudest voices, a retreat from principle. The logic for too many seems to be, look, to, you know, we'll just go along, to get along. You know, the jab is good, that kind of mantra. Now, look, the world would be officially flat if Christopher Columbus had followed conventional wisdom of the time. So challenging conformity is acceptable conduct. But recoding our community for seditious intent is not. When I was at high school, McGregor High School, gee, almost 50 years ago, we studied George Orwell's book, 1984, talked about Big Brother, how lies can become truth and truth can become lies, but the book is probably no longer used as any sort of study text anymore. Revelations in the Bible, remember that book, the first big book ever printed? It warned of the mark of the beast, signalling the end of times. Well, if COVID is the beast, as some of the health officials in this country say, then this QR code we must scan to tell Big Brother where we've been is probably the mark of the beast. So all around Australia, while big business, big government seems immune to the impact of these shutdowns, small businesses and that small business sector is hurting, be it entertainment, entertainment the restaurant sector, the arts. People are hurting and few in power seem to care. It's bad enough with what's happening in Sydney, but Queensland Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk as said, or as they say in Poland, Anastasia Palaszczuk. Let's get the pronunciation right. She said, when asked by David Chrysofuli, the excellent leader of the opposition here in Queensland, about small business, she said, oh, you can't help small business because, you know, it's a global pandemic. Meanwhile, people in the public sector get pay rises, the guaranteed income, but small business, nada. Black old Mark, he's a small business owner. I know him. He sent me a note this week. He's here in Brisbane. And here's his note. He said, my wife's business took $700 last week instead of 10 to 12,000. It's just so depressing. Staff to pay, rent to pay, nobody gives us stuff. Over the last three lockdowns, I've just drawn almost everything out of my super to keep the place going. Still have a large bank loan, plus our house is tied to the bank as security. This week we have customers, but they're few and far between. I cannot sleep at night because we owe creditors. I get up in the morning and throw up on the front lawn because of the stress. And if it keeps up, I will be pushing for civil disobedience. Storm the Bastille in George Street, where Queensland's parliament is. I just cannot take any more of this. There's no support from any level of government. And a warning to the feds. Mark says, and he's a Liberal supporter, ScoMo is fast losing me, telling me we have lower tax rates, but it's no good if we have no customers. Anyhow, keep up the good fight, mate. Well, Mark, indeed, we will. We've got to talk about these things. The Prime Minister's talked about Freedom Day, about giving away, you know, beers for COVID jabs. Too bad that 15 people die of alcohol-related deaths and 400 or more get hospitalised every day. I'm no wowser. 
The Prime Minister, we want to be free now. We don't need a four-phase plan. So, Big Brother, Big Brother, please, just trust us. Trust us with our lives. Keen to know what you think. Hashtag Hardgrave. If you want to send me a tweet, you can write to me directly, gary.hardgrave at skynews.com.au. Mark did, and he made some very, very telling points. I'm very keen to know what you think.